The Busan World Disability Conference 2023 will kick off next Monday, bringing together prominent leaders, experts, and activists of the disability communities from over 80 countries across six continents. Under the tagline "Global Transformational Agenda: Current Challenges and Opportunities," participants will promote exchanges and seek ways to create a world without barriers. For a sneak peek into the global gathering taking place next week, we invited chair of the event's organizing committee and the former South Korean ambassador to the United Nations, Chairman Oh Jun. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to be here. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, actually, a lot of our local listeners might be a big fan of your speech from when you were an ambassador to the UN. <laughs> yeah, but I'm here this morning for a different reason. <laughs> that's right. And that's what we want to get to. But because you're a career diplomat, if you don't mind, I would like to refer to you as Ambassador Oh. <laughs> yeah, sure. <I> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, uh, before we delve into this year's conference and what it entails, uh, could you maybe provide an overview of the history and the evolution of the World Disability Conference in case our listeners are unaware? And how has it grown over the years? Yeah. Well, actually, in the history of human rights, uh, the rights of persons with disabilities are a relatively new concept. Uh, the issue started to be discussed seriously uh, only in the only in the 1990s mostly in and around the United Nations mm. and as a result the convention on the rights of persons with disabilities or CRPD was concluded in 2006 the CRPD is the ninth Human Rights Convention by the United Nations, mm. and the latest. Mm -hmm. um, but unlike other uh, human rights areas, uh, the, uh, the the in the in the process of uh, working out uh, the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, civil society as a whole played a very active uh, role. Um, mm -hmm. Civil society mm -hmm. organizations participated in the process from the beginning, and many organizations um, have long made efforts to promote awareness on the rights of persons with disabilities, including by holding uh, meetings and events. Um, in Korea, we have held international disability events uh, in the past, mm -hmm. such as the DPI, DPI is Disabled People International, mm. DPI World Congress in 2007, mm. and the Incheon Asia Pacific Disability Conference in 2012. But this conference, this time in Busan, uh, this conference is probably the most comprehensive uh. and the largest scale disability event ever held in Korea. Okay, so it will bring large groups of people, important decision makers to the country, to the port city of Busan, to hopefully discuss more uh, detailed uh, policy making and the direction these countries and organizations can go in. So I do wonder, uh, at this year's Busan World Disability Conference 2023, uh, what are some of the primary objectives? Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, as we all know, in recent years, the world uh, has been faced with uh, uh, crisis mm. and global problems. Um, for example, coming from the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. uh, wars and arms conflicts, uh, natural disasters caused by climate change, etc. So mm. these these adversities um, have been particularly harsh on. Uh, persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, because as we know, they are the most vulnerable group in our society. Um, under the theme of global uh, global transformational agenda, current challenges and opportunities, the Busan World uh, Disability Con Conference next week uh, will discuss policies mm -hmm. and seek solutions to these uh, global challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, the conference will feature 
special spe speeches and lectures by leaders in the global disability community, mm. as well as uh, presentations and discussions by uh, experts and activists in, in various sectors, mm. including, um, including education, uh, employment, uh, ITC, mm. and, and, and also we will focus on uh, women with disabilities, and children with disabilities, mm -hmm. because these people are uh, doubly handicapped yeah. in a way, uh, because they are uh, vulnerable in 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 double uh, meaning. Um, mm, they're most vulnerable in yeah, society, perhaps. That's true. Mm -hmm. So we, but but we will also showcase uh, some uh, side events as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, um, for example, digital, we will showcase digital technologies for persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. and we will have an exhibition mm -hmm. of uh, goods made by persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. We will also screen films on the rights of persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. and there will be other uh, cultural performances and art art exhibit as well. Okay, so it's not just about discussions on important policies, there will be cultural events, That's more right. engaging events mm. for any attendees to take part in. Mm. Uh, I do wonder, Ambassador Oh, uh, it could have been any city in South Korea, so why was Busan chosen as a venue to host this year's event? Mm. Well, uh, Busan has been making a lot of efforts to be at the forefront of the of the uh, you know um, of the uh, attempt to, to achieve a uh, barrier-free city mm. uh, where both persons with and without disabilities can live together and enjoy uh, the human rights and well-being together. Um, so mm. this event. Uh, in a way, I think is a kind of culmination of these uh, year-long efforts by by Busan City, and and it also will uh, be uh, instrumental in 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 promoting the image of Busan as a whole as a candidate city for 2030 World Expo. Mm -hmm. um, so I think probably all Koreans uh, will be happy to see that uh, this kind of uh, important event is held in Busan. Mm. Uh, a barrier-free city, they've already paved the way, so there are lessons to be learned from the city itself. It, it helps, perhaps, and like you said, uh, to make it more adv advantageous for the city of Busan to be the potential host mm. for the World Expo. Uh, you, you alluded to some of the distinguished speakers who will be attending the event next week, the World Disability Conference. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the speakers without giving away the entirety? Sure. Um, we will have uh, uh, participants uh, both from the government and uh, private sector. Mm of different countries, as you pointed out, uh, mm -hmm. almost 80 countries. Mm -hmm. And more than 1,000 participants will be there, including 200 foreign participants. Mm -hmm. um, and also the former sec Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon, will uh, speak uh, uh, in the beginning, in the opening of mm -hmm. the event. and. We will have, from the United Nations, we will have, uh, for example, uh, go through the FIFA Army, uh, chair of the CRPD committee uh, based in Geneva. Mm. And she is uh, she's a blind, blind woman mm. uh, who has been very active. She's from Ghana, uh, a developing country in Africa. So a lot of people admire her activities during the last uh, several years. Mm. And we will also have uh, Maria Soledad, uh, who is a friend of mine, actually. Mm. I used to uh, work as president of uh, State Parties Conference of CRPD mm -hmm. when I was uh, UN ambassador. I did that for two years. I made a lot of friends in disability community, and Maria is one of them. Maria Soledad is a Chilean woman 
also with visual impairment. Mm. And she was CRPD chair, and she is now a uh, special envoy of the United Nations Secretary General mm. for Disability. Um, we will also have uh, Aubrey Webson, who is an uh, ambassador of Antigua and Barbuda in the United Nations. Mm. He has been UN ambassador at least for 10 years, I think. He's always there. <laughs> and uh, Aubrey is also a friend of mine, and he, he's blind. Mm. He's, he has been blind uh, from his uh, childhood. And I think he's the only blind UN ambassador currently. Uh. Um, mm -hmm. We will also have Catalina de Vandas, uh, a lawyer from Costa Rica, who was a special rapporteur on uh, rights of persons with disabilities. And she is actually the only UN uh, special rapporteur who ever visited North Korea. Uh. North Korea does not accept human rights special rapporteurs, <laughs> but they accepted her uh, in 2018. So that's extraordinary. Yeah, so she is the only UN mm. human rights special rapporteur. Mm who ever been to North Korea. Uh, not only is her personal and professional experiences groundbreaking and by many measurable standards, it seems that the stories that they could tell it would be inspirational without oversimplifying. But I think that could reach perhaps not just the attendees, mm -hmm. but people who are zooming in from afar, uh, Chairman O. I, I think... As you alluded to earlier, in the last few years, uh, the global politics, the issues of supply chain and food uh, shortage crises, the war in Ukraine that has sparked these discussions, COVID-19 pandemic that has exacerbated the situation. I'd imagine important agendas for the disabled were, to a certain extent, pushed aside or the existing issues exacerbated during mm. these tough times. So, in your opinion, what are the most urgent challenges for the disabled that need to be addressed during this year's conference? Mm. Well, as you pointed out, all these uh, crises and problems are particularly harsher on persons with disabilities. Uh, but I think at the same time, a crisis can be translated into an opportunity. Mm. Uh, for example, um, you know, digital transformation uh, brings a great deal of challenge to disabled people because w especially when they do not have access to new technologies, they cannot adapt themselves to new technology, then things become, life, life becomes more difficult for them. Mm. But if you, you know, change the paradigm in dealing with uh, disabilities and try to take advantage of, uh, of such digital uh, technologies for the benefit of persons with disabilities, we might be able to turn the table around. Mm. Um, you know, for example, think about um, uh, dictation app uh, converting uh, speeches into text. Mm -hmm. We already use that, mm -hmm. but we, we they didn't invent it for the benefit of persons with disabilities, but still we can take advantage of that mm -hmm. so that uh, persons with, with hearing impairment, deaf people, mm -hmm can utilize uh, this kind of technology. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps it was unintentional, but during the pandemic, these tech advancements were prioritized and we can utilize that too. As you've said, mm -hmm. maybe there was an opportunity in that uh, difficulties too. Uh, how would the conference help influencing important policymaking or setting the directions for mm -hmm. any participating parties? Well, all state parties to the CRPD, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, mm -hmm. all of them have obligation to implement uh, what is provided in the convention through domestic legislation. Mm -hmm. So South Korea has that obligation too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that we are implementing them 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, probably we need to do more. But by holding this kind of events, this kind of international meeting, then we can, you know, raise awareness on this issue. And a lot of people will agree on the need to implement uh, this convention on the rights of persons with disabilities, mm. uh, you know, more and more effective way. Mm. 
Um, because you are the co-chair of the events organizing committee, I must ask you, wh- what were some of the biggest and main challenges of organizing such an important international mm. event? Well, first of all, it was not easy to invite all these uh, leaders in the global disability community because usually their schedules are quite tight. But fortunately, we are holding this event in August, uh, which is a uh, uh, break season. for <laughs> many people. So they, a lot of them, I noticed when I invited them uh, three, four months ago, I no- noticed them, they all have wanted to visit Korea, probably thanks to popularity of Korean pop culture. <laughs> so coming to Korea in August, uh, you know, a lot of people thought that's great, great idea. <laughs> so we were able to invite them. But in terms of preparations, um, you know, a lot of people working for this have been, you know, have, it was not easy because uh, there are very different kinds of uh, disability. Some people are blind, some people are, have hearing impairment, some people cannot walk, uh, mm. have to use a wheelchair. So in terms of accessibility, and barrier-free uh, facilities, mm. you know, uh, they have the, the people in Busan and people in organizing committee have been working a lot. And we, we thank uh, the Busan, city of Busan, Ministry of Health and Welfare, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in providing us with assistance mm. that is necessary. Because it takes uh, all the aforementioned teams to ensure that it is a barrier-free city and a barrier-free mm. e- event, I could only imagine. A- and because you're here to, of course, tell us about the Busan World Disability Conference 2023, starting off next Monday, what is your message to mm. our Arirang radio listeners before we go? Mm. Well, our ultimate goal is to achieve a society where both uh, persons with and without disabilities live together and enjoy their rights and well-being together. So we would like to uh, take advantage of this conference in Busan uh, as a kind of uh, small step uh, towards achieving that kind of goal. And we would like to see as many people as possible from in and outside Korea to come to Busan and support all the participants um, together. Ambassador Earl, we'll be keeping close tabs on the event come next week. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank Thank you you very much. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.